EL. In other words, it depends on the size of the software. So S is the source code size. S multiplied by Q is the object source size, object code size. Q is the expansion, uh, Q is referred to as the, this is the ratio of number of object instructions per source instruction. And so this, so here, here Q is somewhere between 2.5 to 6 and depending you should look this up in the reliability handbook so there's a reliability handbook that is available to you if you go to the course web page and actually the reliability handbook uh, the reason uh, I can put it on my web page is that it was actually compiled as a uh, I like some we'll talk about that later R is the object instruction execution rate. Now you may have heard about the MIPS rating for processors. Process yeah, so that's related to that. K is the fault exposure ratio. And they have found it can range between 1 multiplied by 10 is to minus 7. 7 to 10 multiplied by 10 is to minus 7 as use the CPU seconds. Now notice uh, here we are assuming that the time is measured in CPU time. Uh, you said there is R there, but in the equation there isn't any R. Oh, I did finish that. Uh, yeah, thanks for pointing that out. Okay. Yeah, good point. So, total number of object instructions multiplied by how long does it take for one instruction to execute. So if you have a one gigahertz processor, then your clock frequency is one multiplied by 10 raised to nine cycles per second. So each instruction executes in one uh, each Clock pulse takes one nanosecond, and assuming that the design is such that you execute one instruction per cycle, then you, it could be uh, your uh, execution time for one cycle. Execution time for one instruction could be something like uh, one nanosecond. But depending on the processor, it could be different. But to keep in mind, this is this assumes that you are using CPU seconds. If you are actually using uh, man hours, now typically, all the time your uh, computer is not running because you're looking at the results, applying tests, or you're doing some uh, manual work. So that it, you will have to, to multiply it by some appropriate factor. What if it is CPU seconds? Uh, K has been found to be in between uh, these two numbers. Uh, and K is assumed to be a constant. So you could uh, assume that K is some kind of uh, constant. So K is fault, what's the word? Exposure. Oh, this one here? Yeah, what is it? Oh, I'm sorry, fault exposure ratio. Exposure ratio. Sorry about that. So this is the fault exposure ratio. So this is supposed to be some kind of constant. And we, we are going to look at some uh, numerical example. Uh, uh, but basically, uh, notice that okay, this is a constant. This is your uh, software size. This is sort of a constant, which has to do with uh, your uh, high-level language. For more efficient high-level languages, Q would be higher for other would be a less. If the whole thing is an assembly language, your Q is going to be one. Because for each assembly language, you have one machine language statement. 
and as I present such an execution date. So basically, notice that beta 1 is inversely proportional to software size. And we will talk about that uh, a little bit more next time. So next time I'm going to talk about another model and how it uh, arises. And we will continue then. And we will talk about how do you compare models. So we will uh, do that uh, next time.